Hey everyone, welcome to Mountain Beast Mysteries. Today I would like to talk about the topic of missing people in our national parks and in our wildland areas. It's a very popular topic nowadays. We've kind of covered it before on the channel. We talked about the Dennis Martin missing 411 case, which is a very popular story. It's really interesting, it's kind of creepy. Um, but it seems, you know, as of lately, there's been lots of cases coming up, lots of new cases, and especially here in Alberta recently, there's been some weird things going on. Um, but before we get into this topic, I would like to mention that I have actually relaunched the Bigfoot Quest for the Wild Men documentary series crowdfunding campaign. Uh, before, I tried to do it on Kickstarter, but we didn't meet our goals. Uh, a lot of people recommended I use GoFundMe instead and then just have that open for an indefinite amount of time. But I'll talk about that more at the end of the video. I would also like to mention that at the end of the month in Grand Prairie, Alberta, on the 28th, um, me and Keenan from the Alberta Sasquatch organization are gonna be at the Heritage Discovery Center uh, doing a presentation on Sasquatch in Alberta, and we're gonna be watching one of my films. And also at that event, um, Dr. Jeff Meldrum's going to be there and he's going to be doing a presentation in the evening. So September 28th, you know, if you're in Alberta, if you're in British Columbia, try and make your way out to Grand Prairie. Um, if you go on Google, you can search more information about this event. I think tickets are like $25, uh, but it's going to be really fun and I'll give you guys a chance to, you know, meet me and Keenan and, you know, talk about Bigfoot for the weekend. So very cool stuff. But anyways, Missing people in our national parks. Very, very creepy stuff, especially, you know, if you're one of those people like myself who like to go out into the wilderness alone and trek into these very remote and secluded places looking for something, you know, that could potentially pick you up and carry you away. The last video I posted was about the Albert Osman case. I was going over that story and what had happened from his perspective. Now, if you were in his shoes, you know, you would be absolutely frightened. If something picked you up while you're in your sleeping bag in the middle of the night and carried you off, who knows how far. It's a very unsettling thing to think about when you're out in the woods, but you know, people do go missing all the time. And before we kind of get into the mysterious theories, you know, the, the kind of theories like Bigfoot, UFOs, things of that nature, there are people who just get lost or they, you know, get attacked by a predator like a bear or a mountain lion or something like that. That kind of stuff does happen and it happens a lot. I mean, there was recently a lady in Ontario who just got killed by a black bear. Um, the missing 411 style cases though are quite different in that, you know, a series of bizarre things will be discovered such as the, the person's clothing will be found, but it'll be intact. It won't be like ripped apart as it would be with an animal attack. And you know, they'll periodically throughout the investigation, throughout the search, find items of clothing or like personal belongings. But the person never turns up. Sometimes they do turn up, you know, but they are found very, very far away from, you know, where they initially went missing. So, you know, there are very strange circumstances um, that go along with those missing 411 cases. Um, I personally have, you know, gotten kind of turned around in the woods and lost my bearings on a couple occasions, you know, where you're just about to be at that point where you start freaking out. Um, but, you know, the biggest thing is to remain calm and to stay focused and, you know, Pay attention to your surroundings because that'll help you in the long run. And also the, the biggest thing you can do is probably just to be prepared. You know, if you're prepared, your chances of getting lost and getting turned around become significantly lowered. And if you're someone who isn't very used to being outdoors and doesn't have those skills, it should be something that you look into. If you plan on going out exploring in the backcountry, you should, you know, study orienteering. Um, learn how to use a compass properly in a map because those things can help you at the end of the day. Now, what you guys want to hear about, you want to hear about Bigfoot. You know, is Bigfoot responsible for these people going missing? That is something I cannot answer. Though, 
you know, there are tales of Bigfoot taking people and carrying them away. It could maybe account for these people being found so far away from where they were last, you know, seen. At the Albert Osman case, he like, suspected this creature carried him off for a vast distance, so far away from where he was originally camped, and in a short amount of time. Now, you could also go really far out there and say that they were abducted, you know, by aliens. They were taken into a UFO. That could also explain why they are found so far away from their original location. But then we're getting really out there, you know. I'm not saying it's impossible, because I don't know. I, I can't tell you that UFOs exist for 100%. Um, but I suspect they probably do. Are they taking people? I don't know. I've been out in the wilderness many times by myself in really remote areas, and there have been times where I haven't come across anything but a squirrel. You know, sometimes you don't see anything. Sometimes you find signs of bears. You really have to watch out for predators because they are out there. You know they're out there. You see their tracks. You see their scat. That's probably the biggest thing to look out for. Predators and trying not to get lost. You know, and always knowing more or less where you are and what direction you want to go and how to get back. A lot of the risk involved with getting lost can be reduced by, you know, really planning your trip prior and studying maps. Google Earth is a very helpful tool, but I've found that it can be very... I don't know what the exact word I'm looking for is here, but when you look at something on Google Earth and then you get to the location in real life, it ends up looking totally different and you know distances seem further in real life and it can kind of throw you off so it's not really an exact thing but it kind of can give you a, a vague idea of where you're gonna go what your route is gonna be and you know how to get there in a kind of general way not an extremely accurate way but more or less um Recently here in Alberta, there's been a case of a missing hiker, Jeffrey Newton, a middle-aged man who was actually hiking on in one of my favorite areas. I don't know if it was specifically on the trail that I like, but his car was apparently parked where you park to hike that trail. So who knows? I mean, the, the trail is called Hoodoo Creek Trail. I actually hiked it on one of my Patreon videos. And uh, Doug and I, back in the day, Doug from the Lone Crow podcast, he hiked it with me probably back when we were like 13 or 14. But it's a beautiful little hike. I can't imagine ever getting lost on it. But as far as I know, this guy was kind of interested in climbing. So there is a chance that, you know, he had an accident. And uh, that's how he disappeared. But yeah, Jeffrey Newton, missing on one of my favorite trails. Uh, hasn't been found yet, as far as I know. He went missing, well, I think he was last seen on the 3rd of September. And it's almost been a couple of weeks. So, you know, it's one of those weird things, like, you wonder, because you hike these trails, they're your favorite trails, you wonder, you know, if the day will come where you run into one of these missing people and end up stumbling upon their corpse. I don't know. I do know that the family of this gentleman believes there's no way he could have survived but you'd be amazed with how long a human being can survive in the wilderness especially if there's a steady water supply which in that area there is of like relatively clean water um you can go you know three or four weeks without food if you're just sitting around so it's one of those trails though where you know you're not going to get lost there's only one way in and one way out the only way you know you're gonna be stuck there is if you have an accident if you fall if you break something or if you just fall and die and uh, you know it's a total possibility it's also a possibility he was taken by something I guess it's in the Nordic area you know but who knows these things are happening you know he wasn't the only recent person to go missing in Alberta there was a couple other ones I believe one of them was actually down the, the forestry trunk road you know, when you go south of Nordegg, uh, I think it's just south of, like, Ram River Falls, which is where we go on some of our trips, you know, to look for these creatures. You know, Ram River Falls is a very cool campsite. It's very creepy. And to think somebody, you know, went missing around there is also very unsettling. 
So for some reason, right now, this year, this time of year, it seems like there's an increased amount of people disappearing, which is crazy. So it makes me kind of, you know, it makes me think I have to be a lot more careful with what I'm doing, with taking risks. You know, I have to be a lot more precise when I'm planning my trips, you know, letting people know where I'm going you know, the general area and where I specifically plan on walking, basically, like giving people my route and where my destination is supposed to be, you know, that way it would be a lot easier to find me. Now, if a Sasquatch did come and take me, there's, you know, really no way of letting anyone know where they would take me. So I don't want to say people are being kidnapped by Sasquatch, but if they are, there's going to be a very low chance that anyone would find you. And the only way, you know, I guess to get back to civilization would be to do the Albert Osman thing and almost shoot your way out and then take off. But the whole idea of getting taken away by a Sasquatch is just insane. You'd be taken to an unfamiliar territory, an unfamiliar place with, you know, all these creatures around you. But what are you supposed to do, especially if you're unarmed? And even if you're armed, the odds of you being able to, you know, take all of them out would be very low. And, you know, I, I knew a guy back, I think it was 2012 or 2013, um, a guy went missing in Jasper National Park. I think it was at Amethyst Lake, I want to say. And, you know, he was never found. It's crazy. I, I you, you can talk to people. Like, I have a lot of friends who personally know people or know people who know people who have been, you know, missing or went missing in some sort of forest. I don't know. I don't want to be the guy that comes across one of these bodies. Uh, I don't want to be the guy that becomes one of these bodies. But for the most part, I'm pretty careful. And I do know these areas pretty well. You know, the Nordic area, especially since I was a little kid, I've been going out there. And I'm always looking at maps and I'm always studying the area just in case something happens, you know? So, who knows? But yeah, there's there's the new Missing 411 documentary, Missing 411 The Hunted. Highly recommend checking that one out. It's significantly better than the first one. You know, they kind of at the end allude to, you know, the, the Bigfoot topic. And uh, Ron Moorhead and his recordings are actually featured at the end of it. So that's pretty much the main reason why I wanted to watch it. Because, you know, I've always been interested in the Sierra sounds and the Sierra camp. And I think that's very creepy. Just the story of it. There's a lot of weird things happening out there. What do you guys think is taking these people? Do you think it's Bigfoot? Do you think it's aliens? Do you think people are just simply getting lost? You know, for the most part, part they are. They're getting lost. They're getting injured they're getting attacked by animals you know that stuff happens all the time but then there are these weird cases where people just vanish you know and nothing's found or they vanish and you know their personal belongings or their clothing are found you know in, in bizarre ways so let me know what you guys think in the description below with that now Bigfoot Quest for the Wild Man. I have launched, and it is live now, the GoFundMe campaign. Um, I chose not to go with Kickstarter this time. You know, there's a lot of people that recommended to me I go with GoFundMe because um, there's not that time limit that there is with Kickstarter. So the GoFundMe page is up. Um, I've been working very hard the last couple months. That's why, you know, I haven't really uploaded much. And I've kind of been off the radar because I've been trying to save up my own money, you know, to at least pay for half of what I was trying to get before. So I've been working really hard, working, you know, in the evenings, trying to get some extra income to try and save up for this expedition, for this documentary series. Um, and I'm trying to get a little bit more funding to actually make it happen. The summer kind of got away from me. And uh, we're coming up on October soon, which is the perfect month to go out to this location. The water levels are going to be lower. And, you know, October is the month, I think, to go look for Bigfoot. You know, it's the month where the Patterson footage was shot. So I want to get it done in October. I'm thinking early to mid-October. If we can get, you know, the funding, the rest of the funding, um, to take the time to go in there for two or three weeks into the valley you know uh, me and Keenan hiked in there more or less I went in there with a quad 
I've been in the exact area now and uh, you know just to have the time to be able to stay out there for a few weeks and actually do some research do some exploring and try to find these creatures try and find this cave I've been talking about you know I want to get it done and I need your guys' help. So if you're willing to, you know, support this documentary series, if you want to help out the channel, check out the GoFundMe link down below. You can also make a donation uh, via PayPal on the main YouTube page. It says support the channel on the top right. I really want to get this done. I've really drugged this one out. And uh, I've been talking a lot about it. So it'd be cool to really get the series done and have it on YouTube for you guys to watch. So... So yeah, and also don't forget to check out um, the Grand Prairie Sasquatch Symposium that's going on on September 28th at the Heritage Discovery Center. If you're from Alberta, if you're from like BC, any area around Grand Prairie, try and get out there and come see our presentation. Have a chat with us, you know, Jeff Meldrum will be there. So you know it's serious when Jeff Meldrum's gonna be there. I'm really excited to meet that guy. So yeah, let me know what you guys think of all this down below in the comments. If you're new to the channel, subscribe, share the page, get the channel out there. We're like almost at 64,000 subscribers. Like we're getting up there. Also check out 401 Files too. I can't stress that enough. Ben Walgate at 401 Files, his channel is awesome. It's growing really fast and he's doing lots of outings doing a lot of exploring he's getting into the ufo topic which is kind of cool i'm actually going to be talking with him uh on wednesday uh we're going to be making a video just kind of you know tossing ideas back and forth about the paranormal about ufos about bigfoot and things of that nature so yeah hope you guys like this video thanks for watching we'll see you next time on mountain beast mysteries